Okay, good afternoon and thank you for joining us at our uh, information event um, from the team at Strode who are going to talk to you this afternoon about the science offer. So I'm going to introduce you to Bina Bardwaj who's going to talk you through and we have a team of panellists available to pick up your questions at the end. Thanks very much Bina, I'll hand over to you. Hello everyone and welcome to science. Um, I, I'm the head of science, my name's Bina, as you probably get, and I'm just going to give you some uh, background into the type of courses that we offer in science and the kind of activities that our students carry out whilst they're with us and some of the extracurricular activities that we offer them. So if we start off uh, looking at the variety of programmes that we offer. We offer the level two vocational to the level three vocational courses, and also the level three in academic subjects, as well as the level two GCSE subjects in science. And now all of the uh, subjects are housed in five of our laboratories, which are modern laboratories, and they are supported by our technicians and team staff and each member of our staff is an expert in the field and they are there to stretch and challenge our students to get the best, our the best out of our students while they're with us. And in addition to studying their programme with us, we offer students a range of variety of extracurricular activities to support and enhance their, uh, their experience whilst they're with us. And that could be uh, you know, um, STEM day where we invite employers from outside to come and talks or uh, show them what it is actually like uh, at the place of work. Now, the subjects that we offer at Strode's uh, in nights, the A levels we offer uh, are A level biology, A level chemistry, A level physics, and I'll talk to you a bit about all of them in a minute. We also offer the BTECs in science and in health and social care. The level three BTEC that we offer is the applied extended certificate in applied science, as well as the diploma in applied science. Together with the level three certificate in health and social care and the level two certificate in health and social care. We also offer um, GCSE in combined science and combined science will have the, uh, the biology, the chemistry and the physics as well. The kind of extracurricular um, things that we offer uh, are wide uh, and range uh, in quite a lot of fields. Um, if we're looking at the science, we're looking at a Sunday uh, for all science students. And it's not just science, it's anybody who has a STEM related subject. So it could be maths, it could be physics, it could be computer science, it could be PE that has some affiliation with science. So STEM is the science, technology, the engineering and maths. So on that day, we invite um, employees to come in and talk to students about a range of um, subjects they might want to study at. Uh, university and also get a feel for the kind of work related um, you know jobs that there are out that out in in the employers and therefore they can go away and um, make a, an informed choice of what they would like to study uh, later on not only that we also get university staff to come and give us some master classes so they participate in, in what is new and what is the newest and latest research that they're carrying out so they get uh, informed choices and knowledge about their own areas that could be biochem biology, could be chemistry, could be physics related. With that, uh, we also offer our air level students the opportunity to sit the British Biology Olympiad, uh, the Intermediate Biology Olympiad, as well as the Chemistry Olympiad. And so um, those students uh, then get uh, challenge with other schools in the country 
And if they are successful in getting involved, then they get selected to take part in an international biology Olympiad challenge or an international chemistry Olympiad challenge as well. So the students uh, work very hard towards this. Uh, and because of that, we've also now in, uh, going to enter our students for the intermediate biology, Olympiad, which is our first years or year 12s of the uh, A-level programme. With that, we also offer students, all students in science, an intergroup challenge. Uh, so come Christmas time or just before Christmas, uh, we put in a chat, get students and put them in groups where they uh, answer questions and, and they challenge each other on science related questions. We also have uh, a forensic crime scene day. So uh, those students studying applied science or those students who are interested in forensic science uh, actually uh, take part in this forensic uh, crime day where there is a mock crime scene uh, and it's outside somewhere else and they have to treat it as if it was a proper crime scene where they investigate uh, and take note of the kind of things that might trigger them to find out who the culprit, who did the crime. So students really enjoy that uh, because it's hands-on, it's something they've learned and they can then apply it to the field. With that, we also do biology field trips as well. So in the first year of the biology uh, programme, our students, um, we take them out on that three days uh, residential trip. So to incorporate the ecosystems uh, part of the uh, specification for module four, and that allows the students to actually have a uh, hands-on of how to uh, take part in and how to monitor environmental uh, influences and impacts on organisms that survive. Um, we also have a variety of uh, physics masterclasses uh, where Royal Holloway come and talk to the students. All students go to talks at Royal Holloway as well. With that, there is a rare disease day as well, where students from biology, whether it's BTEC or an A-level or, or health and social care, who are interested in rare diseases, so we turn out on a rare disease day as well. The health and social care students also go to the London Zoo, simply because they get to see and experience how to care for children when they're out on trips and what kind of things they need to try uh, to be able to plan the, the day properly. So those are just some of the things that we do. Uh, with that, we also have a science symposium uh, where our students uh, take, and that's right across science, not just one specific uh, discipline, where students create a poster, a scientific poster, and that's presented to parents and students and also staff from Royal Holloway uh, who will um, get them to talk to them about a poster that they've presented on a topic that they've enjoyed or are interested in. So while students are studying with us, we ex some of the expectations that we have are that students uh, can get work experience and uh, this work experience uh, ranges uh, depending upon what available and what they're interested in. Uh, the level two students also have work experience week where they develop certain skills that will set them for the life of work or when they go into work experience uh, they know what kind of skills are expected whether it's presentation skills whether it's talking to uh, you know larger groups or whether it's building your CV so these are all the skills that they develop in order to allow them easy progression onto the next phase of their career. Uh, we also encourage our A-level or level three students also to carry out some work experience where they, some of them have gone and had some work experience with uh, maybe within a farm because they uh, enjoy working with animals or in a lab where they want to have a look at some chemistry experiments. So, or it might be uh, they've gone into um, a universe lab to see how the labs change from one institution into another. So there's a range of fields of work experience that they can actually carry out, whether it's a nursing home or whether it's, um, you know, just getting the communi communication skills built in. In addition to that, our A-level students uh, also have to carry out a series of PAGs, and these are practical skills that they need to develop whilst they're with us. 
uh, during the A-level programme. Uh, there's a series of 12 experiments and each PAG contains three different types of experiments. The minimum experiments that they do are 12 uh, and that will allow them to develop the skill such as drawing or mathematical skills or uh, handling equipment or how to plot a table or how to plot a graph. So all of these are incorporated in the 12 skills that they need to develop. Uh, and the skills and these skills that they develop are also then tested within their um, papers or exams at the end of the two years or ongoing as part of their assessments. The vocation courses um, have a large, particularly the applied science, have a large part of their course are practically orientated. And they also sit both external and internal assessments. Health and social care students also sit both internal and external assessments. Uh, so, and it's all monitored rigorously and therefore assessed. Um, for every unit that they actually um, take part in or learn. So I'm going to talk to you about a bit of each of the subjects with A-level biology. Uh, there are three papers um, that there's students have to sit at the end of the two years. And uh, paper one is part of processes and it covers uh, modules one, two, three and five. There's six modules in total in biology that they need to learn. And the modules in biological process, which is paper one, is one, two, three, four, five, which is developing basic skills and building on the knowledge that they learned at GCSE, which is part of what their foundation biology is, and then using that knowledge to develop uh, internal detailed depth of uh, within their topic areas. Biological diversity is a testing modules one, two, four, and six. Uh, one is the practical uh, skills element of it, and two is foundation uh, elements of the A-level biology course. Now, paper three, uh, both paper one and paper two are 250 minutes long, and paper three is uh, an hour and, and 30 minutes. But it's the same framework, for both chemistry and for physics. There, but the practical uh, endorsement in biology, which is PAG, the experiments, that is non examine an assessment, but is examined within the papers. It doesn't have a separate paper on its own, but it is endorsed, uh, which is an add-on to the certificate um, at the end. We look at chemistry. Chemistry has the same framework, uh, six modules divided into three papers and a practical endorsement element as well. It's important that all students have this practical endorsement and the percentage that contributes to the papers changes within the disciplines uh, in uh, budgets about 15% uh, usually the practicals and the math elements about 10% and that varies from uh, chemistry to uh, physics the content of the math may be a little bit more than it is in biology as there's more uh, mathematical um, problem solving questions that are in that as well. So it's similar framework. So you have uh, modules in paper one, which covers the periodic table and the elements in the physical chemistry, and then paper two synthesis and analytical techniques, and paper three being the unifying uh, concepts for all unified chemistry. In A level fixed, uh, to study A-level fix, um, all students all need to be studying A-level maths with it, and uh, it's important uh, because the first year of physics is heavy on the maths as well, uh, even though you still need it needs the second year, uh, students really need to have a good um, set of maths knowledge to be able to work alongside with the physics also. You can't do physics unless you also study A-level maths. Uh, similar sort of a breakdown of the papers, three papers, one, two, and three, um, given you the same sort of knowledge and the practical endorsement in physics at the end as well. But to study any of the sciences, you need to have at least a grade six in your science, whether it's a set science or whether it's combined science, uh, together with a six in your maths as well, um, and the English would be preferable 
at six. If not, it's still okay, as long as you have four or above. Look at the BTEC level three in applied science. We have two different types of BTECs. Uh, the National Extended Certificate, which is equivalent to 1A level, uh, and that covers two units uh, in year one. And there is a, a unit that is exam-based, and the students sit exams in both components of biology, physics, and chemistry uh, at the end of the unit. And that can be taken either in January or in June depends how we have a built assessment plan. That gives them a, um, then the following year, they have take another two um, units. There's also another examined unit, plus uh, the uh, long investigation for science investigation skills as well. Uh, and there's an optional unit uh, that they can take, which is the biological molecules and metabolic pathways. That's the extended certificate, which is equivalent to one. The national diploma is actually equivalent to two, and it uh, covers a range of units, as you can see. And it also has the four units that are going to be studying at the extended certificate. You do that in the first year of the diploma, another four units the following year in the second year. And there are exams, again, with external units uh, that they sit either in January or in June uh, of the same year or the following year. Now, our students to applied science uh, are, as applied science is a very practical orientated course, we get them to have certain skills. Now, all the sciences, uh, students, we expect them to get their own PPE, uh, and that means they get they have buy a lab coat and some goggles uh, to protect themselves when they're actually doing the practicals in class. So they're not using each other's; they're bringing their practicals. Uh, so we're trying to keep them safe whilst they're doing practicals with us. The health and social care. Uh, there are two levels, the level two certificate, and the certificate is equivalent to two GCSEs, and it's a one-year course, and it's got six units which the students study, and it develops a range of skills uh, that the students can then use to either progress on to another level three course in health and social care, or they combine it depending upon whether what the uh, level two qualifications got to progress onto other uh, disciplines other than just health and social care. They might want to pick up applied science alongside health and social care as well. The level three national extended certificate students, uh, there it's a, again a two year course and they are to um, 1A level, consists of four units and the, the three of which the units are mandatory, one of them is an optional unit. So it's particularly ideal for students who uh, want to develop the skills that need um, to, in the work setting or care, care setting uh, work or going on to a degree program in health and social care or a paramedic. GC combined science of the, the ideas for those students who didn't do very well the first time round uh, and got a grade three instead of a four and they just missed that grade uh, to progress onto the level three program. So it's them an opportunity to resit, get that level four or above in order to go onto the level three program. And this covers all elements of biochemistry and physics and they and they are set in those uh, particular disciplines all three is biochemistry and physics as well and they can either move on to a vocational program once they've got a grade four or above or if they've got grade six and they can go into an a-level program and um, do the sciences or combine them with other sciences that they may have got 
uh, previously the first time round. Or they can go on to, to do an apprenticeship going to industry instead. So where do our students go? Uh, there's a variety of places where our students go. Many of them do go to Russell Group universities. As you can see, Nathan uh, age, um, went on to Princeton at UCA and uh, to study uh, mechanical and aerospace engineering. Um, so, but we also had a lot of our students, some of our students have gone to, um, to Oxford, uh, to Imperial, to UCL to either study chemical engineering or to do uh, biochemistry. Uh, some have gone on to Bath, Royal Holloway. Um, so they've gone to oh, even Reading, uh, Surrey. These are some of the common places uh, that our students actually go on to. And they study a wide field of disciplines. So some can do pharmacy, some have gone to do dentistry, some have gone to do medicine, um, and some have also gone into biomedical science or engineering or going completely into engineering or computer science with physics and math as well um, or um, going into paramedics um, to do uh, with with health and social care or even with applied science and the biology come in or into sports science so it's a wide variety it just sets them up for life with the science and the, you know, the world is their oyster and they can go anywhere uh, with with a science qualification so what do we expect from our students? 100% attendance and punctuality. Um, and we expect them to um, dress accordingly. And so, and we also expect them to uh, behave uh, accordingly in a lab. And also there's lab skills as well and lab checklists that we get students to sign so that they know that they're, not, they're obeyed by the lab safety rules uh, and that they are wearing lanyards all the time so that we know who they are uh, and that come into uh, class ready to learn and ready to work, equipped with all the tools that they need to make the notes or to take part in a practical uh, environment. And also they're respecting themselves and respecting the people around them and inspecting the college environment as a whole. Um, we always, always in our lessons, try and engage our students by developing employability skills, by being in different aspects of this you could go on to set at, or we can get um, special um, staff from university or employers to come and talk to them about various skills so they, they know what is available for them uh, and it gives them some sort of idea where they might or what they might want to do uh, when they leave Strode. As I said already, we have a variety of um, trips and visits that are set up by student services uh, within college life. There's lots of clubs and societies that they can join. Uh, there's you know, sports as well. Um, and there's lots of competitions that have taken place. And um, we also offer the DOFE, um, which they can continue with started at school they can come and continue and move on to either the silver or the bronze or the gold um, and we also have what we call aspire program for our talented students to be able to stretch and challenge them a little bit more uh, so there's a particular cohort of students and we also offer students the ability to voice their opinions and also to feedback to us and we can feedback them to say that you know if there's that, something they want, a change that they like, which is feasible, then that we can have feedback discussions with our students. And we also have class, class reps be able to, to talk to us as well. Okay, is there any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Bina. That was really, really helpful. There's so many opportunities open to people. Um, so if you have any questions, can you please just pop them in the chat box and the team will be um, available to answer your questions. Um, what, are, what are a good um, subject combinations for people that want uh, to go on to university to study science degrees? It depends. If they want to do medicine, they can do biology, chemistry and physics or biology, chemistry and maths. Uh, or, uh, or biology, chemistry 
and another subject. Chemistry is the, the most important subject for medicine and dentistry as well. But there's a combination of subjects that can do uh, uh, chemistry, physics and maths, or they can do physics, maths and further maths if they do engineering, or they can do big applied science combined with health social care, plus a biology or PE, uh, if they want to do paramedics or, or biomedical engineering or, you know, any applied science discipline in that room. Thank you. Um, somebody's just asked a question about, I'm interested in a career in forensics. Um, um, can I take that? That's fine. My, my name is Paul Mackay, by the way. I run the applied science BTEC course. So uh, our students are going to forensics. There are two routes in, really. So if you're interested in the police or criminology, often they will take the course the diploma course alongside the psychology uh, is a good one. Uh, but if you're more interested in a scientific forensic course, i.e. an analyst, then uh, applied science is the diploma you take. And then you could have any, any other course really that would go with that because it would be the applied science that would give you those analytical skills. Sometimes we have people that might do an A-level in biology, uh, for example, alongside the forensic science, which helps your field work skills. Great, thank you, Paul. Um, do, I'm not sure if this question would be for you or for another member of the panel, but um, why do we have to take maths alongside physics? Um, um, hi, I'm Mona, physics teacher. Physics papers and exam um, contain 40% maths questions, mathematical questions, calculations. So it's really important that students are well prepared in maths and they're not GCSE maths, they are A-level maths. Um, within the questions. Uh, however, not having maths and wanting to pursue physics at university, choose any degree where physics is required, any engineering degree, any science degree which requires physics, um, you won't be able to access them without a foundation here if you don't have an A-level grade in maths. So I advise students who are keen on studying physics to move a step forward and maybe look up those degrees where physics is required and see that maths has to be taken along. So from our experience, students having maths along perform much better in physics. Yeah, that's great, thank you. Now somebody's saying that they've got a five in their uh, GCSE maths, but it's got very good grades in their sciences. Um, Will, will they still be allowed to join if they have a five but good grades in their sciences? Um, from my experience, that, yeah, uh, if, I, if I in maths to to be able to study physics and maths at A level, they need to have a six in maths GCSE. And that's the same for biology and for chemistry. Uh, maths is really important because ten percent of all the math questions, uh, it, all the bar questions are math related. And that's coming from the experiments and from the content, uh, which requires just analysis and that's quite hard to do. So what advice could we give to somebody who's, who's got the grades and everything else and is just short of that six in the maths? I would have to actually have a look to see what grades they've got uh, for the sciences and, and the other subjects that they have, whether they have got the skills to cope with that. Yep. So it'd have to be on an uh, individual basis. Okay, so apply anyway, come to yeah. an interview, and then you'll, you, you can advise them of the next yeah. options. They, yeah. would be, um, they would be able to take the applied science courses, both the, the shorter extended certificate and the longer yes. diploma uh, with a, a grade five in maths. So there would be an alternative for them. Yes, there is. Yeah, the, five, the six is just the A level. Um, they can go into uh, applied science for that. Thank you. Um, what if I'm only taking foundation science GCSE? Well, they are able to get a five for foundation science, which is the maximum. Uh, they can go into a applied science. Unfortunately, they would we do need to have the six in the science to do the A level in sciences, um, because they, particularly uh, for biology, it's very content heavy. Uh, there's lots of terminology, so and it really stretches the students uh, more 
uh, than they have been sure already at GCSE. So yeah, they definitely really do need to have the six in, for, for the A-level, for uh, applied science, a five would be fine. Great. So the alternative is, is applied science if you don't have those grades for yeah. the A-level subjects. That's, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, and somebody says they want to be a vet. What, what subjects should they take? Well, they've got to take chemistry. That is the most important subject. Uh, biology will definitely help. Uh, or they, and maths would help as well. Uh, they don't have to take maths uh, and they don't have to take biology, but uh, would advise strongly to take biology with the uh, chemistry and maths definitely helps with that as well. But they should research uh, into the course at various universities. Uh, and I suspect they would say they, those are the usually common or they can take biology, chemistry and physics. They don't want to take the maths uh, and take the three sciences. It's quite heavy going, um, but definitely chemistry. Thank you. And uh, back to the a forensics question. I mean, what grades are needed to pursue a career in forensics? Um, I guess we've got the entry criteria, but what, what would people be looking for for university? Well, students uh, in the last two years have got onto forensics courses uh, at various places around the country. And generally, you would be looking at sort of um, for a diploma, it would be merit distinction. Now, if people don't understand that in terms of the BTEC courses, that's the equivalent of about a C and an A in, in A level. So um, you still need fairly good qualifications to get onto a forensics course. But you would normally look for something like D, D, M, or uh, I suppose it would be A, A. C uh, in A level terms. Great, thank you. Um, is it possible to take, if, if you want to do all three sciences and you also need maths, is it possible to take four A levels? It really depends on individual basis and it also depends what grades they have achieved GCSE. It is a possibility, yes, uh, but it really depends on an individual basis. So again, once again, apply and yes. you will discuss that at interview. Fair. Exactly, yes. Great, thank you. Um, medicine, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of um, students aspire to do medicine. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, again, what subjects do they need and, and, and right. what's okay. your experience of, of supporting well, students with that? Okay, well, again, chemistry is the most important subject for medicine. Uh, and of our students take biology, chemistry and maths, or biology, chemistry and psychology. Uh, some students can either take biology, chemistry and art design if they want to do, or history, as long as they have chemistry and biology and one other subject, although maths probably preferable, it's not in stone that they have to have another science. Um, they can have another subject like psychology instead. So they can take biology, psychology and chemistry, but again, Chemistry is the important subject for medicine. Thank you. Um, somebody says, says they're interested in astrophysics. Does A-level cover this um, within the subject area? Yes, we cover astrophysics and um, some universe physics in year two. Um, in year one, we build upon the GCSE topics and in year two we move to more advanced physics and two chapters we study cover this topic and yes it's one of the most popular reasons for physics join, uh, students joining physics and every year we have students going to study astrophysics at universities. And what are the subject combinations that work well for that destination? Uh, of course maths and physics some students have further maths and physics uh, but other than maths and physics, any other subject will facilitate this because the, the universities only require maths and physics for astrophysics. Great. So it depends on their abilities or their desires. It could be psychology, computer science, maths and physics. It's again a popular combination. Chemistry, maths and physics. Great. Thank you. Um, how would you recommend students prepare for starting their moving on from GCC to um, A level? Is there anything they can do to get themselves ready? We do have an induction pack. We also have 
uh, summer work where we guide students set them work to do over the summer. Uh, we also guide them to go away and look at some websites, go away and look at museums, uh, you know, and, and that's of scientific interest from them and give them a flavour of how to make notes. Um, some of the textbooks that we might re recommend going to look at them to see, get a feel for content, the subjects, and then we set them some work to do to bring uh, on their first day of, of, you know, in September. Thank you. Um, and as somebody says, uh, apologising, but could, could we repeat some information for them? Um, what courses would they need to study to go on to do forensics and criminology at university? Oh, okay, that's me again. So um, obviously the diploma in applied science is the one that has a forensics unit, but people have studied that generally alongside something like psychology, uh, which you can do at A-level or uh, at BTEC. Great, so they would study applied science and psychology. So that takes up two options, the applied yeah. science, and then you've got one more option, and often people will take psychology as a favoured one. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, what about the lab facilities at Strodes? Um, how, how, uh, what kind of facilities does the college have? Right, we have five labs. We've got uh, three upstairs and two downstairs. Uh, they're manned by our technicians and we have the equipment that's necessary to carry out all the practicals uh, and students are, have to bring in their own PPE, uh, which is they can buy it from the college, uh, and we um, they have to have lab coat and safety goggles in order to carry out the experiments, um, and they have to do at least minimum twelve for the A levels. But for applied science, it's more vocationally related, and there are far far more practicals and experiments in applied science. So they need to uh, bring in the, the PPE during the lessons when, and take responsibility of looking after them as well, so that when they come in, they will have to put on their um, PPE on. Uh, anybody who does bring in their PPE, I'm afraid, will not be able to participate in the experiment because we, we take self and safety very seriously. I could also add that all A-level sciences lessons take place in a lab, so we don't yes. move out. Physics lessons, all biology and all chemistry lessons happen in their own specialist lab. And I can add applied science. Uh, health and social care is not in a lab uh, unless it needs to be for a specific thing. Uh, but the applied science are all in a lab as well. And so are the GCSEs we offer as well, the combined science. Okay. Um, on the applied science, what are the exams like in the BTEC science course? And are you able to retake them if you're not happy with the grade? Um, yes, so it's modular, unlike the A level. So you can, so you will take exams in both years, generally at the end of the year, and there will be reset opportunities uh, for those exams. The exams are also shorter, so they split it into three different papers. Um, so unit one and five, for example, will have three 45 minute exams. Uh, whereas the A-levels, as you know, are, are, are more like two hours long. So they're shorter exams and they're modular. So you kind of, the exam covers less of the, um, the content than an A-level exam would do. There's also a practical exam where you have to actually do a practical um, experiment and then you do an, a, a written paper exam based on that experiment, uh, normally a week to two weeks afterwards. Thank you. And is there, are, are there any work experience opportunities in science? Uh, shall I take that one, Bina? I mean, yeah, um, this year it's been difficult, but generally we have uh, a week in year one and also a week in year two where there are uh, either opportunities to go out in work placements. And we've had people at Royal Holloway University, Kingston University, uh, with Thames Water, for example. So there are opportunities available which we encourage and then there is a another week in the first year where people come into the college and we tend to build a, a small website where they talk about how uh, they would go forward in work or educational or uh, a university course that that's in the applied science course thank you um and somebody saying they want to be a nurse do they have to take biology um 
it would be desirable, but um, as long as they've got the GCSE, I suppose, in the sciences and health and social care, then that's, that should be fine. Can I, uh, every year we get about five or six people that go into nursing with Wifery uh, and things like that. So the applied science is perfectly uh, good for uh, all sorts of nursing. That's a great option, isn't it? Yeah. Great. Um, so I'm just put, putting a last shout out for any more questions. Um, if anybody wants to quickly pop them in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, is there anything else you think that we need to um, cover from, from your, your end? Why, why Strodes? What, what's special about Strodes? That's always a good question to ask you. Oh, the, uh, the students, the staff are very friendly, it's very communicable, uh, and students support and respect each other as well. So uh, it's got a good atmosphere, um, and it's open, and they can come and see it at any time. So I think that's really important because they get a lot of support built in as part of the tutorial programme as well. Uh, so the students are in tutor groups. So... If they have any issues or are struggling, uh, they have an uh, additional learning support team or a uh, where they can support uh, with their studies or they can go and speak to the tutor and say, um, I'm, you know, um, I'm having issues or I'd like to change the subject and they can go speak to the tutor or they can go speak to student services or they need some counselling. So, you know, it's very generally very supportive atmosphere that we have with the students uh, at Strohs and with the staff as well. That's great and what about the standards? Are your results good? Yes, uh, we've had 99% uh, uh, pass rates uh, in, and 100% pass rate for vocational courses last year and uh, it's improving year on year so we are um, very happy with our pass rates. Thank you. Um, somebody's just asking about homework, actually. We haven't had that. Um, how much homework can I expect for science? It, it depends on a weekly basis. So if we've covered, normally they would get some homework uh, and we expect students to spend at least five hours per subject at home on top of studies. So uh, to be able to cope with uh, just making notes and answering some questions that's been set for them for each of their subjects. So at level three, that is what we, the expectations should be. Now, if you really want to do Excel in your subjects, some students will spend at least 10 hours and some may spend fewer. So, uh, and that's all, that's all re reflected in the, the homework grades that they get and assessments that they do. So uh, we encourage the minimum that we students' expectations of five hours per subject. If I can add to that, obviously the vocational courses, the VTECs are very coursework heavy. So we encourage students and we help students to be able to plan their work so that they can take a very large piece of work and split it over a, a period of weeks. Great, thank you. Um, so that looks like we've come to the end of the Q&A. Um, thank you very much, um, Bina, Paul and Mona. That's been really helpful um, and you. lots of interesting questions. Um, if you haven't yet applied um, to the college, please do so. These courses do fill up uh, quite quickly. So we're, we're, we're really um, urging people to get their application in now um, and we will interview um, uh, remotely. I think we're still interviewing at the moment, aren't we? Yes. Uh, by telephone. Um, so that would be great. The, this uh, presentation has been recorded because I know there's been a lot of information um, given over by the team. So we will send that out to you by email. So you'll have a chance to go back over it again and perhaps share it with your parents as well if they haven't been able to join you this evening. Um, and, um, and if you have any questions at all, please email admissions at windsor-forest.ac.uk. Um, and they will answer them. Or you can jump onto our website every day and our admissions team are on the live chat. So if you've got any specific questions, then you can pop them onto the live chat on our website. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. That was a great session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.